What's up, I'm Triple Shoot. Battlefield 6's free-to-play Battle Royale is here, and in this video, I'll show you how to get the best performance and, of course, get a competitive edge with the best in-game settings. This video is only going to focus on in-game graphics options and related things like that, so if you'd like even more performance, check the description down below for related guides. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. I did previously cover Battlefield 6 in a complete in-depth optimization guide. This one's specifically going to focus on RedSec. While most of the settings are about the same, a few things have changed and most of it is pretty good. Obviously, for most people, the performance that you get inside of RedSec is going to heavily depend on the overall power of your system. A lot more VRAM should be used. There's going to be a lot more players, things like that. It's going to be super variable, but this should at least help you see better number one, and get way better performance. Let's do it. In the in-game options, head across to options at the very top and all the way across to graphics. Here's where we'll start. I benchmarked absolutely everything as I did previously. The balanced performance preset gives me around 111 FPS and performance 128. Obviously though, we'll be customizing this. Graphics quality, I'll change to custom, or you can just click edit right below under the graphics quality settings. Inside of here, I'd start off by moving the graphics quality preset to low, just so we can start moving things up from there. During benchmarking, low, I was at 133 FPS, medium 112, high 109, ultra 102, and overkill 92. I definitely wouldn't recommend overkill or ultra, Really, in any circumstances, high is probably as high as I would go here. Although we'll be starting on low and working our way up for the best possible performance. Just keep in mind, we can actually get better performance than the low graphics preset, so stick around. First of all, texture quality completely depends on how much VRAM your system has. You can see how much you have in the bottom right down here. You can see your game's VRAM usage, other apps like YouTube, Discord, etc. Especially if you're watching videos, I'd recommend closing those temporarily just so you can give the game better performance. And obviously you've got a max. If you go over the max budget, you'll be swapping a lot of textures, causing even more stuttering and things like that as you're traveling around. So texture quality, while it doesn't affect your performance at all, if you've got more than enough VRAM available and you're nowhere near the max, I'd recommend only really pushing it up to high or ultra. As for the HD texture pack, which enables the overkill option, or at least improves how things look, I wouldn't recommend using overkill as it'll make that traversal stuttering worse, especially if you're on a slower drive. And of course, you'll save some extra drive space, etc. High or ultra is probably as high as I would go here. And texture filtering improves the quality of textures, although this doesn't really have any impact on performance. At least during benchmarking, neither of these options had a difference, which just keep in mind is possible because I'm not reaching my VRAM max. Then mesh quality did actually have a performance impact. Again, I assume it's to do with the amount of VRAM. Between low, medium, and high, I had no performance difference, except overkill dropped me from 133 FPS to 131 and overkill 130. I would only go up to high with this option here if you've got some extra headroom. Then terrain quality. This obviously again depends on the VRAM where you are in the map, but most importantly, however, during benchmarking in different areas around the map, I didn't see a difference here, at least for the most part, so medium or high here is fine. Unless you're on the lower end, in which case you'll definitely need to keep this on low. Then, undergrowth quality, very minor difference, though I would recommend low just for less rocks and other objects cluttering your terrain. Effects quality will mainly have to do with when explosions are going off and things like that, and I recommend keeping this on low just so that there's less performance spikes, especially in moments where it matters. Volumetric quality was one of the heaviest hitters of the previous benchmark, although now I didn't really see too much of a difference between these. Previously, I moved from 135 to 130 between low and ultra, but during benchmark, benchmarking now, I only saw about a 1 FPS difference, so things have definitely improved here, or at least there's less volumetrics going on in the areas that I tested. In my previous video, I recommended low, and I'd probably recommend the same here, just in case you get into a really foggy, dusty area and your performance drops by a little bit. Then lighting quality, this has a pretty big impact on shadows, and I'll show you the difference here, low versus high. And performance-wise, I only saw a 1 FPS drop moving from low to high. And again, this mostly has to do with the amount of VRAM your system has. If you change this in-game, you'll notice a big change in your VRAM. If you've got VRAM available, yep, yeah, crank it up to high and things should be fine. Then a local light and shadow quality. I didn't see a difference between any of these options here, so I'd probably recommend low or high. Although again, this has a massive impact on VRAM use. If anything, high is probably as high as I would recommend going here. Then sun shadow quality. 
blow through ultra, I move from 125 to 123, 121, 115, and 110 FPS. Having the most large FPS drop off between high and ultra, I wouldn't recommend going above high. That being said though, leave this on low for the best performance. It does affect shadows quite a bit, the accuracy of shadows, etc. You should still easily be able to see people around corners and things like that if they're casting a shadow. That being said, as you can see on the details in the background here, moving between ultra and low, having it on low makes the shadows just a little bit more blurry and you can sort of maybe count that as a small advantage when it comes to people standing on a roof, at least in this scene here. You may see things ever so slightly before other people. So low is what I'd leave this on. Shadow filtering, we've got PCF and PCSS. I didn't see a difference here, set this to PCF and that should be fine. Then reflection quality, there's obviously not too many reflections around a dusty battlefield area. And between low and high, I didn't really see too much of a performance difference here. Visuals wise, there is a very small difference between these, though it shouldn't really matter. Low is more than fine here. Screen space reflections, while you may not think that heavy hitting, it is actually still one of the biggest FPS hitters between off and low. I moved from 116 to 112 FPS and down to 110 at high. I definitely recommend leaving SSR turned off unless you like how the general look of the world improves. Again, you can see it very simply on the shadow cast in the background here. And of course, if we flick over to a real game, here's off, low, and high. Then post-processing quality. This has to do with depth of field, bloom, motion blur, etc. I've cranked all of those down and we'll do that in just a second. But for now, I'd recommend just leaving this on low. There's not really a performance difference here though. Then screen space, ambient occlusion, and global illumination. This is a pretty big hitter. Off is the best that you can get here in terms of performance, whereas setting it around 116 FPS. GTAO low and high. Low is the default for the low preset. Should drop you down slightly in FPS, especially if you're on lower end hardware. And for me, I went from 116 to 115. Low and high are about the same. Then moving up to SSGI, I dropped to 110 from 115 and SSGI high from 110 to 106. I definitely would only recommend GTA or high at best or off in most circumstances for a pretty big boost in performance. Then finally, high fidelity objects amount. Obviously, this isn't going to matter too much throughout general battlefield gameplay, but throughout a much larger world like the Battle Royale world, I definitely recommend leaving this on low. Performance wise though, I didn't really see a difference in performance, but of course, for you, depending on where you are, this could be a pretty big issue, especially if you're CPU bound. Anyways, these are my optimized settings. Let's go ahead and change some of the other options. I'll back out from here. We'll obviously need to restart our game for changes to apply here, but that's fine. If we head into advanced of the graphics section, you'll get across to this here, the upscaler and things like that. Fixed res, always leave this at 100%. Frame rate limiter, turn this on only if you're experiencing lag and things like OBS when you're trying to record or stream. This is something that I have to do just to keep my OBS stream from stuttering and lagging while I'm actually recording this game. But throughout general gameplay, leave this on for the best performance. If you are going to cap your FPS, cap it to slightly below what you're actually getting for more stable frame times, input latency, and of course, better performance of apps in the background. Dynamic resolution scale, leave this off. Nvidia Reflex low latency, I'd recommend enabled here if you have this option. And if you have a really low powered CPU, set this to enabled plus boost. But of course, you only have this with Nvidia graphics cards. Anti-aliasing, we'll skip over as you should be using an upscaling technique like preferably DLSS on Nvidia graphics cards or FSR. We'll check out these three in game in just a moment. Upscaling quality, I definitely recommend leaving this on quality at lowest unless you're really clawing for performance and you're playing at 2K or even 4K, then you can consider dropping it to balanced or even lower if you're on 4K. Quality though is the best option here for visibility and it should give you a healthy boost in performance compared to off. During benchmarking, off I was setting at 98 FPS, DLSS 117, and then FSR 135. So there's a pretty big boost in performance between DLSS and FSR when it comes to FPS counts, though of course a DLSS should look a lot better. If you're really clawing for FPS on an NVIDIA graphics card, try choosing FSR and playing around to see if that feels better. Finally, XESS has come a long way, but of course there's some weird issues with it. Like you can see here, the sun's doing a weird flickery thing, which isn't there on FSR or a DLSS, at least as bad. XESS are setting at 130 FPS, putting it above DLSS, but below FSR. DLSS is what I'll be using. So this is just a TAA, so no upscaler. Then DLSS on quality, FSR on quality, and finally XESS on quality. Then AMD 
FSR frame generation leaves us off for better input latency. Even though your numbers go up and your latency numbers go down, you'll definitely feel the difference here, and I'd always recommend leaving this off. Same goes for future frame rendering, but of course, if you're on a much newer graphics card with way more performance and you're getting way better FPS to start with, you can try playing around with these. Finally, performance overlay. Setting this to simple shows you some numbers in the top right, extra shows you numbers all over the place, and advanced shows you a graph in the bottom left, which might be useful for you. I'd recommend leaving this off or maybe simple at most. Obviously though, I'd highly recommend using a third party overlay, much like the Steam overlay, which you can barely see in the top corner. I've got a full breakdown showing you just how powerful this thing can get. Or of course, you can use something like River Tuner or MSI Afterburner. Then backing from here and going down to camera settings, field of view does affect your performance, but play with whatever you're most comfortable with. Weapon field of view, wide is what I play with. Then weapon motion blur, world motion blur, and camera shake, I'd recommend lowering all of these as low as possible and enabling reduce sprint camera bobbing. This should help improve the stability of your camera while you're running around, gunning, etc. And of course, hopefully help, especially if you're motion sick sensitive. Chromatic aberration, vignette, and film grain all off once more. They're just extra visual clutter. Then down to display, I play borderless, which should give you roughly the same performance as full screen, but full screen should be the best for input latency. Full screen resolution should definitely match your display, aspect ratio, refresh rate, HDR, all your preference. Vertical sync, definitely keep this off unless you're getting a screen tearing for better input latency. Then on the audio tab, if you're trying to listen for footsteps, consider scrolling down to audio mix and changing this to night mode, which should give you a much more compressed audio dynamic range. So explosions should be quieter and quiet sounds should be louder. Elevating the sound of footsteps, making it slightly easier to hear people coming. Audio and background, I definitely recommend leaving on, especially if you're going to tab out to Google things, etc. Scrolling down almost all the way to the bottom of the audio tab, tinnitus SFX volume, I definitely recommend lowering almost as much as possible. Then all the way down to music radios, you can lower the volume of in-game music just to make hearing things a little bit easier. I'll keep them around 20%, but you can turn them off entirely if you wish. On the system tab, if you're a creator, I definitely recommend checking out the creator options here. And at the very bottom network, I definitely recommend enabling scoreboard ping just so you can hold tab and see your ping into the server. It's the easiest way to check it. At the very bottom, you can also choose to enable the network graph if you're actively trying to debug issues there. Then moving all the way up to HUD, I'd highly recommend turning off, this is new since the last video, the infantry HUD motion and the vehicle HUD motion, which makes the UI not shake around as you're shaking around and moving around. This should help make things quite a bit easier to see. Everything else here, I've basically got as default, except for minimap size, which I'd highly recommend raising, as the minimap is your number one tool for spotting people that aren't directly in front of you or even behind objects. It's incredibly useful, and you should get used to checking it as much as possible. Scrolling down further, cross up, customize as you see fit. I'd recommend changing it away from white just to make it a little bit easier to see, usually to a really high contrast color like a bright pink, a bright green, etc. Whatever you like, set it to here. I'll set mine to say cyan. Then, if you're still struggling to see it, change the crosshair thickness to thick for the best visibility. Scrolling down to hit indicator, you can customize colors to how you like them. For example, most importantly now, the armor soft, armor hard, and broken hit indicator, which I'd all recommend leaving on as such, and of course, customizing as you see fit. You can get used to the default colors, or of course, you can customize them here if you see fit. What I would recommend is changing the headshot color just so you're aware when things actually happen, as by default, it's just white, the same as a normal hit. Hit. Then hit indicator numbers. You can turn this off if you want less visual clutter. And that's basically that there. Then something I previously missed talking about in the previous video under accessibility, but it's the easiest way to find it. You can find the graphics quality settings tab and color profiles. Inside of here, you can customize the color of pretty much everything. I'd highly recommend changing this to the left for custom, although there are a couple of colorblind settings which may help you. On the custom tab, I'd recommend making all of these colors 100% saturated by moving the this block all the way to the top right. So the green becomes more green, blue more blue, etc., making the game way more saturated and easy to tell what's going on. Just keep in mind, I only skipped the primary color and the neutral color over here. Everything else got so much more saturated, making it so much more easy to see in game. And also under graphics quality settings, camera effects here, pretty much everything here should be as low as possible, except for reduce sprint camera bubble, which should be turned on, and infantry crosshair projection, which you can try turning off, which will keep your crosshair perfectly centered all the time as it can move around. I'll try the game 
with this turned off, see how I like it and maybe keep it there. And with that, that's basically it. We've now optimized the game for the best settings, best visibility, and of course, changed our UI settings and more for a competitive edge. So hopefully you found this video really interesting, if not super useful. Thank you for watching. My has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all on the battlefield. Ciao.